So I wanted to reach out and offer uh, some sort of assistance to uh, this person who keeps on talking about cows on my blog. Uh, he's uh, evidently from India and uh, obsessed with cows. And uh, there is a, an account called uh, Devin Nunez Cow on Twitter. I'm suggesting that this person seems a little lonely and uh, may be in need of bovine comfort. So uh, go uh, search that pasture. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk a little bit about this whole QAnon thing. Um, the only thing that I can equate it to, having personally been accused of being QAnon, and I'm not, um, is a period in American history that started in February 1692 and ended, I think, right before June 1693, and that was the uh, Salem witch uh, trials. And you had, what, 210, 220 people accused. They found 30 guilty. They um, hung 19, and I think 14 of them were women. And then there was the case of uh, Giles Corey. That was the man who refused to go along with the bullshit, and uh, they put stones on on top of him uh, and as he was being uh, crushed and his lungs were collapsing and things were horrible he said bring on another you know this is a tough guy so I respect him but there's also uh, the hysteria that surrounded this case the um, complete lapses in due process and uh, false accusations that killed you know you had um, five or six people die in jail because the conditions were so bad there. This was colonial Massachusetts. And you kind of see the same hysteria with uh, the, the anti-Q uh, people. You had the Q people who were, um, you know, definitely animated too. And then you have the anti-Q people like Jim Stewartson, um, who's using it, in my opinion, to, um, to raise money and to move Lincoln Project into Thinking Project, his little, uh, you know, think tank, and that will be a thing for Stewartson to raise a lot of money. And I think that Stewartson is tied in with Rick Wilson, who's just a sleazy uh, scumbag of a human being, and who I have discovered old tweets that indicate that he had a fixation on teens, probably still does. You have to understand, this guy is a co-founder of the Lincoln Project, which is mired in controversy right now after John Weaver, the other co-founder, well, one of five, um, has been found being predatory towards uh, young men, teenagers, underage teenagers. One, one of the victims, I think, was 14. This is weird, sick, deviant, predatory behavior, and it's not acceptable. Um, you know, it's it's not acceptable for uh, our media to tell us that there hasn't been a problem with pedophilia when we know there, there has. And so if you uh, call it out, um, they want to point at Dennis Hassert, who I think is, was a horrible guy, you know, uh, just an evil guy. Uh, but there's examples on both sides. And, you know, it's um, perverted abuse of power and it's happened for a long long time you know I keep on referencing Mary Renault uh, you know just read some of her stuff she talks about uh, the ancient Greeks uh, where you know it was common to have older men with uh, younger boys that were being sexually abused it's happened throughout um, ancient cultures it's happened throughout modern cultures and you know you have to accept it it's reality, um, it, just like there's a lot of other realities, which is, uh, well, everybody was talking about the storming of the Capitol and um, how it was just such a tragic event for the nation. Uh, meanwhile, there's women and children out on the street and because uh, there's so many glitches in the uh, performance of government right now, <laughs> it's really tough for people.
you know, it's really tough for people. I saw a homeless couple uh, outside of a grocery store and um, helped how I could. And, um, you know, talked to them. They didn't look like they were um, drug addicts or mentally ill and talked to them. And they just said it was a combination of uh, this pandemic and, you know, lack of work. And uh, they've never been homeless before. They didn't look um, rough. They didn't look like they had been on the street for a long time. And they didn't know what to do. So, um, you know, the, the nation's going through stuff. Uh, we are. And we always do, actually. We always do. That's um, it's America. We're always, you know, on the edge. We're supposed to be... Uh, in expectation of uh, some bright future. And ultimately, that can happen. It can happen, but you know, there's always uncertainty and you gotta get used to it. And you gotta just toughen up and concentrate on other things. You know, I don't sit there and fixate on um, QAnon all day. I compose music, I look into history, um, you know, try to uh, try to keep balance with things. And when you look at someone like Jim Stewartson, that's manic, uh, scary behavior. He's a manic, scary guy. And this is a guy who was admitted to being on Twitter 20 hours a day. <laughs> I'm not even on Twitter anymore. <clears throat> you know, I got sick of the uh, echo chamber, you know, the, the endless... Um, hate machine which is what it is you know it's <laughs> it's a bunch of people saying i want to express myself <laughs> you know and then there's a bunch of other people saying we have troll armies you know we have um collusionary bullies and we'll wreck your life and we'll we're going to tell people that uh you murder people and you rape people and uh you're bad 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 and that's that and they'll they'll weaponize uh anything in your life and turn it around. I know because, uh, you know, I've been through that channel. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you walk away from those uh, toxic people and you do what your purpose is. My purpose is composing music. And that's where I'm at. So I write new music. Um, I'm always composing things. I'm always looking into history. I've got a lot of friends who are into philosophy we have great discussions and you know i have a lot of enjoyment in my life um with that this other crap um this is a bunch of hysterical empty people who are um trying to latch on to something and um constantly looking for confirm you know confrontation so you know what can you do i know i say you know a lot so i'm sorry for that but um once again, we go back into 1692, 1693, and just take a look at the hysteria there. You want to talk about more hysteria? You go into 1792 and 1793. The terror is part of the French Revolution, and um, you can compare the capital uh, siege, as they're calling it, with people's heads on pikes, with, you know, guillotines run, running blood everywhere. And it wasn't just uh, nobility and royalty that were being uh, head severed. It was also common people. Things got really rough. And so, you know, you have to move forward with logic. And you have to move forward trying to get the bigger picture and say, let's not get caught up in the mass hysteria. Let's try to look at this logically. Thanks for listening.